believe that God leads us through our life's campaign. We recognize that God has brought both of you to this moment today. He's guided you to it. And both of your love for God and His amazing grace that makes this moment significant. And the marriage doesn't stand solely on the authority of the state, nor by the seal or wedding certificate, but by the power and faith and devotion to Lord Jesus. So as we start, we'll be praying together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your unending love for us, your unending love for Chris and I, who's standing for us today, God. Pray that your blessing will be upon this day, you stay come, as we walk in the fullness of you called to be. In Jesus' name, amen. How are you guys doing? You look great. Y'all, y'all made it. You look beautiful. Hey, soak up all the, look at the people that got to come. You can wave at some of the people, some of the friends that are here. A lot of happy faces. Soak up all the details. Um, and I hope everyone knows this. By attending the ceremony today, you're committing to, to walking with both of them. Because they're, they're walking this commitment out and uh, the future that God has for them. And over the past several years, it's been such an honor to watch both of you. And get to know both of you. Watch you serve together. I watched you pour out your hearts to the kids of our church. Even when we were a portable campus at Columbia High School. And I cannot tell you from the bottom of my heart. And our entire team, our church, our staff, on behalf of Pastor Chris, thank you. Thank you for how you went so well. I honor both of you for that, your consistency. Chris, I admire you on so many levels. You have a hunger for the things of God. It's, it's motivating to watch. You're a leader, and I want you to know you've got God's call all in your life. I hope you know that. I think everybody would echo that. Um, I asked Ivy what she admires most about you, and uh, she had a few words. So here's what she said. Love her people, and the subheading before the paragraph was encouraging others to serve us. <laughs> But she said, every year our church does a verse of vacation Bible school that we call Summer Blast. Just, uh, just picture a room full of close to a thousand kids. And I will tell you, it has been a thousand kids. Rumor, sometimes 1,200. Um, probably 100 adults all singing, dancing, chanting their team called participating games left from stage. I find the environment overwhelming. This is I mean. And at the best of times, when Chris was in his element, he asked me if I wanted to run around and high five people. <laughs> I agree, but I quit after a few minutes because I just couldn't keep up. Instead, <laughs> I walked to the risers and watched as he greeted and encouraged person after person. I'm sure you left that day still feeling like you hadn't done enough to connect with everybody that was there. Chris really, really loves people. It's not an act. He never gets tired of it. Uh, she talked about doing things well, researching everything she needed to know before her surgery, answering questions you didn't even know she had, um, a joyful approach to life, uh, fun socks, which all the grooms are wearing today. That's great. Um, there you go. <laughs> she said, I could go on about summarize by saying Chris brings joy in life wherever he goes. He doesn't dismiss things because they are for kids, but instead he carries lunch for Legos or about Star Wars and all the other things he enjoys into adulthood the best way possible. I can't wait to spend my life carrying the same sense of fun to those around us. And I'll honor you for that. Way to keep that joyful attitude. And I, you're going to be an amazing wife. It's clear you have a passion for serving others. I can't wait to see what God's going to do through both of you. Ask Chris the same thing. Um, and what's awesome about y'all is you always structure your answers the same way. Topic, <laughs> then paragraph. So, <laughs> I'll coach you in that later on. Uh, his first subject, asking me. So, over the course of my life, I developed a list of qualifications for my wife based on experience. Nothing crazy. But some stand out items where she would ask me on our first date. She, would, she could dance. <laughs> she had to have a personal walk with Jesus. And I had to know her for a while. More than that, I've read about the list for years. Over the years, I started to think my list was a bit ridiculous. But then out of the blue, I would text me. I've known her for years. I've seen her walk with Jesus for my close friends. She could dance and sing. And she asked me on the first day. So I went through my list. She did everything. My answer was clear that he would love to. Uh, praying with kids. If you shared how you guys got to pray with kids together and how her face lit up after. And her words were, we've got to do more of that. Ministering to kids. Uh, helping me clean. Amen. All the other in the world. He said, I don't know if you know this, but I like hobbies. Electronics, camping, free, for any great RC cars, and many more. These hobbies require things. Um, and you just go on to share how she's taking time to even pour into you before you even married, married uh, to help clean things. And you said, Today, you and my apartment or my life are perfect, but I'm thankful and excited to get to walk here with Ivy. And this is huge. Both of you pointed to certain components in marriage that are. Very, very crucial, which is selflessness and, and giving. And when you keep a consistent serve each other mentality, it eliminates the enemy from slipping in between the covenant that you're making today. And now, the Bible's very clear. You both have individual roles from this day forward. It's out of uh, the book of Ephesians. And marriage is a special thing. It was created by God. It's not just a tradition or a system that man created. It's a covenant.
covenant relationship that hinges on your ability to put somebody else before yourself. And hard times are going to come. There will be challenges. And in those times, it's hard to let go of your own wants and needs and desires and focus your attention on your spouse. But it's what God's called you to do. And Ephesians 5 gives specific encouragement to each of you. This is out of a paraphrase. It says this first to you, I be wise. Understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to the church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ, as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. So I mean, means this. Be understanding. Learn to know his needs and do your best to meet them. Be supportive, because the way you support him will be a reflection on your relationship with Jesus. It will be a direct representation of your support and your love for Christ. And then stay submitted. And as Chris leads and you stay submitted to his leadership, God will protect and cover you the same way he does the church. And being your, submitted to your husband is honestly the safest place to be. It's not an obligation, but it absolutely is an opportunity. And then to you, Chris, Ephesians 5 continues. It says, husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His order to look her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that's how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. And so it means this, Chris. Give sacrificially. Christ is your example. The way he laid down his life for us all. Give willingly. There are no strings attached. Your love for Ivy should be marked by giving, not getting. And speak affirmingly. Because it goes, the words you speak to her and over her will actually affect her beauty. I believe the more you speak affirming words over your wife, the more attractive she'll be. To you. And scripture says you're already doing yourself a favor since you're already one in marriage. You guys are going to be an amazing couple. You set an amazing example for those around you individually and now together. And I know the ministry, I hope you hear me in this, the ministry you're called to is going to be more impactful together than apart. So you both don't expect perfection from each other. Make a decision to let, uh, not to let feelings lead. Let your choices lead. Your feelings will follow. Those choices that are founded on God's word, the covenant that he made with you. And as you keep Christ first, here's what's going to happen. He's going to use you. And he's going to bless you. And that brings us to a holy moment where you guys are getting ready to recite your vows. The power of God goes into operation and takes place. And you're now invite God to become one in his sight. And so uh, I want to ask you guys the best you can to join hands. You can pass your flowers off. I think the most important question you can answer in front of anybody, especially on your wedding day, is about your relationship with Jesus. And Chris, let me ask you, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And I do, let me ask, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. So upon this public confession of faith, you let everybody know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And when you join yourself to Jesus by faith, according to God's own word and own statement, you stand cleansed and made completely new. It's a miracle in the same way another miracle is going to take place that joins you together as husband and wife. And the same power that joined you with Jesus, this is powerful, the same power that joined you with Jesus, we made the Lord now joins you together. And so as you get ready to make these vows, and vows are great for today. They'll smell amazing. You'll look beautiful. you got a flower on your jacket. That doesn't happen every day. They're awesome for today. But your vows that you're going to recite to each other are a pillar that you'll go back to. And you'll remember. No, I remember the day we stood in front of this group of people and said what we were going to do and how we are going to stand together. So before you recite your vows, Chris, that you've read, let me ask you, do you take I to be your wife to live together in a holy covenant of marriage? Realizing that God has given her to you as a gift, do you pledge your faith to God and vow to love her, protect her, honor, and keep her, forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you must show me? You can grab your vows.
and him with I love you. I promise to love you just as Jesus Christ loved his church. He gave his life for us and chose what was good and true over what was comfortable and easy. I promise to love you by building you up on the hard days and by celebrating with you on the other days. Things will all work out for the best. And we get sure might be so good that I promise to love you by trusting you with my real thoughts in every situation. And I will give you only the truth. But rejoice in the truth and not in wrong things. And you are too valuable to me for me to do anything else. I promise to love you by listening to your needs and by working with you when I fall short with these other promises. I am not perfect, but I am better than you. I mean, I promise to love you. Nothing less than that, but a whole lot more. Let's get married now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before you recite your vows, let me ask you take Chris to be your husband, to live together in the holy covenant of marriage. And realizing God has given him to you as a gift, do you pledge your faith to grow to God and to grow to respect him, and comfort him, honor and keep him, forsaking all others, and faithful Chris, so long as you both show him. There's a verse in Proverbs that reads, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I've waited a long time for this. There was part of me that had given up, thought that they would never come. I was far from home, far from church, above my own legs. But I remember the moment I chose to give it one more try. When I turned my life back toward God, that poor church, that poor community was good. We've known each other for a while, but I was impressed all over again by the way you knew the community you love and care for people who are so genuine and sweet and pure hearts. You bring joy, laughter, and peace everywhere you go. I knew very early on that you were someone I wanted to be around, and you knew I was interested because I think you were volleyball, small group all summer, and I don't. <laughs> and then we started dating, and we started talking about the future, and everything lined up. We both wanted all the same things. Uh, so just over a year later, here we are. I want to be able to be able to be able to see what the next big plus years would look like. We don't know our future years very deeper, but I do believe we do, and I believe that we're going to do it with each other. So I promise to pursue God with you. I promise to work alongside you to help you serve those around us. I promise to put in the work it takes to grow and maintain our relationship, and I promise that we will bring joy, fun, and laughter to everyone who comes in our path. In other words, I promise to love God. <laughs> Chris, it's a pleasure to tear your mouth. Why don't you go ahead and grab the right hand? I'll be trained. The small and silent rings, they're large in significance. They are made of, mesh, of precious metal. They remind us love's not cheap or common. They're also made in a complete circle. They remind us that the commitment that you're making today is unending. Un it's the outward sign of the inward commitment. And so as you wear these rings, may they serve as a constant reminder of the promises that you're making today. So Chris, you can place this on our left hand. Repeat after me. With this ring, I do wed. With this ring, I do wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Every time you see this ring. Every time you see this ring. Remember how much I love you. Remember how much I love you. Every time I see this ring. Every time I see this ring. I'll thank God for you. With this ring, I do wed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every time you see this ring, remember how much I love you. Every time I see this ring, I'll thank God about your mercy. this time, Chris and I ask to share communion together. It's a very worshipful 
in grab grab experience, I'm going to support your plan. Go for it, brother. You, you do whatever you need to do. I'm gonna, I'll put her out there with you. Here's what communion means. It's important in the very first moments as a husband and wife. Um, that you honor the Lord and remember the sacrifice that His cross provides for us. And you both receive communion separately, but now you're going to do it today, today and experience a new dynamic as a couple as you do it. And so as you look on, I encourage you to pray for them as they go through this together. So as we conclude this ceremony, I'd like to pray a blessing over both of you out of Deuteronomy. So let us pray together. It says this, If you listen obediently to the voice of God your God, and heartily obey all His commandments, God your God will place you on high. And all these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond you because you've responded to the voice of God. You'll be blessed inside of the city and in the country. Your children's children will be blessed. God's blessing will rest on your finances. You'll be blessed in your coming in and you're going out. God will make you the head and not the tail. God will defeat every attack of the enemy. He will order a blessing on your barns and your workplaces. He'll bless you in the land that God, your God, is giving you. God will pray that you will lavish good things on Chris and I. That you'll throw open the doors of heaven and pour out a blessing they can't even contain. In Jesus' name, amen. Having exchanged rings and committed your hearts and your life to one another, do you promise to keep Christ the center of your marriage and your home? divorce and never become an option. Your lives are no longer separate but one. When God's one together, let no man separate. May you never take each other's love for granted, but always experience that wonder, remembering this day that of all the people in the world, you chose to spend the rest of your lives together. So as much as you pledge this lifelong commitment, love and devotion, devotion to each other, by the authority committed to me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now declare you to be husband and wife. Chris, you may kiss your wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time as a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Chris Stringer. Give it up for them.
say that can take some pictures. If not, you're hanging around for the party. The reception area, if you've got all these doors, take the hallway to the right, uh, down to the fellowship hall, and there are some hors d'oeuvres and everything like that, some appetizers, and there are games to be on the place. Y'all have an amazing, amazing day. Thank y'all for being here. Give it up for one more time.